Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your word, which is the truth. We receive your word, written in our heart, written in our mind. We thank you for the revelation of it. We thank you for all that you're bringing forth through your word this night. We will take hold of it and be doers of it. We'll see the fruit of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated if you would. Tonight we're going to share with you on the subject of walking worthy before the Lord. It is important that you understand that God expects us to walk worthy before the Lord. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, we see who is the worthy one. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created all things, and for Thy pleasure they are and were created. We talk about this particular word, worthy. It is a word which, when you look it up in Strong's, you look it up in some of the other lexicons, of course it means somebody who has great worth, but also it refers to someone who is adequate or sufficient or fit, someone who is shown to be worthy of something. And we must understand that this is what God wants to bring forth in our life, that we would be worthy before the Lord. Jesus is the one who is worthy, and the Father is worthy. At the same time, we've got to understand we are not worthy in ourselves, just in our own ability. We see over in Matthew chapter 3, in verse 11, the Bible says, I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. Not worthy to be even to take up or unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We're not worthy to carry or bear the things of God unless God does a work in us. Otherwise, by ourselves, we're not worthy whatsoever. That means the fact that anybody who's not in covenant relationship with God is not worthy before Him. Well, we see something over in Luke chapter 7. In Luke chapter 7, in verse 2, it says this, a certain centurion's servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. And when he heard of Jesus, he sent unto him the elders of the Jews, beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant. So here's the elders of the Jews coming. And what did they say? When they came to Jesus, they, Jesus, they besought him inst instantly, saying that he was worthy for, the, for whom he should do this. Otherwise, they were con trying to convince Jesus that this guy was worthy of you healing him. And why was that? They said, for he loved our nation, and he hath built us a synagogue. Does one's works make them worthy before God? No. This, did this centurion think that he was worthy before God? No. Jesus went with him. When he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not thyself, for I am not worthy. They tried to convince Jesus that he was worthy, but Jesus knew that this guy had a heart that was understood that he wasn't worthy. He says, I am not worthy that thou shouldest enter under my roof. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy. He said, you can't come into my home because I'm not worthy. I don't have a covenant with you. I'm a Roman. And he says, he says neither thought I myself worthy to come unto thee. He knew that he wasn't worthy himself. That showed the fact that he was right. Because of that fact and that understanding, and he called him Lord. We see in Matthew chapter 8, similar passage. He said, say in a word, my servant shall be healed. He says, I'm a man set under authority. He understood how authority worked. He understood the fact that he was under authority to the Roman government and in authority over the soldiers, and he would speak, tell them to go or come and do this, and they would do it. And Jesus heard these things. He marveled at them and turned them about and said unto the people that followed, I, found, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. But it's interesting, this guy, he understood he wasn't worthy. One thing we have to realize, we aren't worthy by our own ability, or our own works, or anything that we have done, as they were trying to say. At the same time, we must understand that our works are important to God, because God's the one who determines whether we are worthy. So, otherwise, we aren't worthy in our own selves of doing something. But when we do what God says, God takes notice of that and determines whether you are worthy before the Lord. Your works have a lot to do with it, and that is important. We are to be worthy and to be shown worthy before the Lord. Of course, who is the one who's going to bring this to pass? In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 
we see who makes us worthy. He says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency, our ability, or competency, just another word that comes along with this worthy, is of, is of God, it's not of ourselves, who hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, not a letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. In other words, what he's talking about is the fact that we are not sufficient or worthy in ourselves. What's our, who, where's our sufficiency? Where are, is our worthiness come from? Where are we made fit for the Lord? It's from God. God's the one who will make you be worthy before Him, and it's going to happen because His work is going to be accomplished in you. Although you and I still have a part to play to see us walk worthy before the Lord and be accounted worthy. And this is very important as you will see scriptures as we go forth through the New Testament. We see over here in Luke chapter 3, Luke chapter 3 in verse 8, Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father, or I say unto you, God's able these stones to raise up children to Abraham. So notice the statement he makes, Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance. In other words, if you really are shown to have worthy of repentance, it's going to be shown by your fruit, not just your talk. A lot of people say, well, I repent. Well, that sounds like a good statement. The word repent means to change my mind, but how is it going to be shown if you really repent? It's going to be by your fruit. It's going to be by your actions, isn't it? God sees our actions to determine whether or not we have truly repented. And as he says, bring forth fruits worthy or showing the fact that you are going to be accounted worthy before God because you have truly repented in your life. It goes on and says, Now also the axe is laid into the root of the trees. Every tree thereof, therefore which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That means they're going to be burned up. It means they're not going to be making it. That's why we've got to be sure that we are, have true repentance in our life. And we do what the Word says, and we bring forth fruit. If we don't bring forth fruit, as it says, we'll be cast down, hewn down, and cast in the fire. We're worthy if we repent, and repentance is shown when we bring forth fruit. Over in Acts, Acts chapter 26. Acts 26 and verse 20 says this, For, "...showed first of them at Damascus and at Jerusalem throughout all the coasts of Judea, then to the Gentiles, that they should repent." and turn to God, and do works meet for repentance. We saw the fact that there was fruits necessary, and fruit's going to be the result of your walking in line with the Word of God. Now here it talks about works meet for repentance. See, God wants, He looks at you and He knows you, not only by your fruit, but also by the works, the things that you carry out in your life. What are they to do? Repent, change their mind. Turn to God and do works meet, or showing forth. This is this word, oxios, which is the word for worthy, or to be fit, or to show forth the fact that you are considered one who has deemed and are counted as worthy before the Lord. So God looking at your works. Your works are very important. We see a scripture over in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord, are you and I a prisoner of the Lord? Yes, we are. We're bought with a price. We are, belong to Him. We're purchased possession. We're not our own. We are His. So we are to be the prisoner of the Lord. He says, I beseech you, or I call you, that you walk worthy of the vocation, which is the calling, wherewith you are called. You and I are to walk worthy of that calling. Now, that shows the fact that just because you're called doesn't mean that Everything's going to be great. It's going to be automatic. No. You're going to have to walk worthy of the calling wherewith God has called you. Many people don't walk the walk. That's why many are called, but few are chosen. They don't respond to what God tells them to do. And God wants you to walk worthy of the calling of God. And we talked about every believer's New Testament calling. And how are you going to do it? With lowliness, lowliness of mind, <clears throat> humility, <clears throat> and meekness with long-suffering, forbearing one another, which means holding up one another in love, 
endeavoring to keep the unity, endeavoring actually means to be diligent, it's the word spadazzo, which means diligent, being diligent, as Young's brings out, to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. In other words, you are going to show forth if you are walking worthy of the calling of God upon your life, if you are one who is having humility, meekness, long-suffering, holding up one another in love, and being diligent to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, if we're going to be able to do this, of course, we've got to get the knowledge of God and walk in His ways. We see over in Colossians chapter 1, down here in verse 9, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire. Now, the word desire is a word iteo. For you who haven't been here, the word iteo is a word which means a demand of something due when you look it up in Strong's. It doesn't mean desire or any of these words it says down here. It's error in, the, in the, even the Bible works. It's a word which means a demand of something due, which is what you do when you pray. Do not cease to pray for you and to make a demand of what's due you that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will. God wants you filled with the knowledge of His will, not just a little bit. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Otherwise, as you get the knowledge of God and you act upon it and produce a spiritual understanding in your life and you continue and it gives you wisdom, knowing what to do in every situation, you're going to walk worthy of the Lord. This shows you other important principles that are shown if you're going to be found worthy before Him. You need to get the knowledge of God. You need to get spiritual understanding as you do the Word and gain wisdom. And you're going to walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing and you will be fruitful in every good work if you walk worthy of the Lord. God wants us to be fruitful. Fruitful in every good work. Fruit should be coming forth in everything that you do and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened, which is a word from a form of the word dunamo, strength that comes from the power of God in you through the word, with all power, this is the word dunamis, so empowered with all power, according to his glorious power. Now this particular word, actually, Young translates it correctly, Power of His glory is what it should be, because the glorious is actually in the genitive, and it means the power of His glory. But this is a different word for power. This word back here that we talked about that meant power, dunamis, over here it's not dunamis, it's kratos. Kratos means a manifested power that's being released out of you. We did a study on this. If you've never read our book, How to Live by Manifest Power and Might, it covers all this in depth empowered with all power according to the manifested power of His glory. When God's power is manifest, the glory of God is coming into manifestation. Unto all patience, which is steadfastness, and long-suffering in the face of the circumstances with joyfulness. See, patience is of what? It's of the soulless realm. Luke 21, 19, in your patience possess you your souls. Long-suffering is what? Fruit of the Spirit. You're going to be long-suffering in spirit and you're going to be patient or steadfast, is what it means, in the area of your soul. So, as this is occurring in your life, you're going to be shown to walk worthy before the Lord. He goes on and says, giving thanks unto the Father who has made us meet. This word meet is another word, form word that's also referring to that which is worthy. Some is rendered fit or shown to be sufficient. The fact that this person is fit to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in light. Otherwise, as you are walking worthy before the Lord, you're going to be able to partake of your inheritance that belongs to you in Christ. So many people think, well, I can just take hold of the inheritance promises, and they're not walking worthy before the Lord. They wonder why they're not getting anything. There are conditions for it, as we see. Going back here, he says, you're going to get knowledge, spiritual understanding, wisdom, that you might walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing. The results? You're going to be fruitful in every good work, increasing the knowledge of God, empowered with all power according to the manifest power of His glory. You're going to be steadfast. You're going to be long-suffering with joyfulness as well. Joyfulness, not you know, being down, depressed, and discouraged, and so forth. Giving thanks to the Father who's made us meet. He's made us fit or made us able to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. And that's exactly, He wants you to possess your inheritance, and you will do it as you are walking worthy before the Lord. Now we see over in Matthew, in chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, in verse 10. 
Matthew 10, verse 10, he says this. When he's talking about them going, in fact, we'll go back here for a moment, he's talking about them going forth to heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you receive, freely give. And as they went forth, in verse 10, he talks about how they were, they were going forth for no script for the journey, new two coats, neither, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. The word worthy is axios. That shows you who's going to be worthy before God. The man who's a workman. The guy who's working for him. If you are going to be one who's going to be worthy of your food or your nourishment or your provision in your life, you're going to have to be a workman. We need to be a workman that needs not to be ashamed doing the things that God has told us to do. In fact, we see over in Luke chapter 10, it's parallel with us in verse 7. He says this, in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give, for the laborer is worthy of his hire. The worthy. God wants you to be found worthy. That's why you need to be a laborer out there. Of course, if you're not out there being a laborer, why should we get anything? No. God wants us to be a laborer for the Lord, preaching the gospel, ministering to the people. Now also, back in Matthew chapter 10, we'll go back there for a moment. Matthew 10 in verse, we saw verse 10, we look at verse 11. Into whatsoever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy. You want to find people that are worthy wherever you go. Someone that's going to be worthy is someone who's walking in the ways of the Word of God, walking in obedience to Him. And there abide till you go thence. Otherwise, you want to find someone you can have fellowship with that's like-minded, walking in the ways of the Lord. And that's what he would tell them to do. He says you're supposed to inquire, which really means to search out search out in it who is worthy. So they were supposed to find the worthy people and abide there. He said, when you come into a house, salute it. If the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, if it's not walking right, let your peace return to you. You don't put your peace upon that particular house. And he said, whosoever shall not receive you or accept you, this is the word decamai, not the word lambano for receive, decamai, which means to accept you, nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust off your feet. Don't get upset because somebody doesn't listen to your words. If they won't listen to your words or receive you, just shake off the dust, go on to the next person. You preach the gospel to them, go get it to someone else, and keep on going forth to do the will of God. Now in Matthew chapter 10, we see further about who's going to be worthy before the Lord. In Matthew 10 verse 37, it says, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. That tells you something. You've got to put Jesus first place. You can't let anybody before, be before the Lord. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now the word loveth, by the way, is not the word agape. It's the word phileo. This particular word means friendship or fond of, as opposed to agape love, which is an unconditional giving love. This is talking about whoever is fond of the father or mother or is fond and of the son or daughter more than Jesus. He's not worthy of me. If that's the case, you're never going to put anything of a father, mother, son, daughter, any person before the Lord. You must follow the Lord and be obedient to him in all things. Otherwise, you're not worthy. And he that taketh not his cross. What, what's the cross? Some, a place where something's put to death. What's to be put to death? All the works of the flesh, the deeds of the body. So he that taketh not his cross, meaning that you are to crucify the flesh and follow after me, doing what his word says, is not worthy of me. That means God expects you to crucify the flesh daily. That's why it says in Luke 9, the fact that if any man comes after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. You're not worthy of him and you're not going to be found to be worthy of God and you know, see God's blessings and the things he purposes if you won't crucify the flesh. We must put him first place in our life. We see another scripture over in Luke. Luke chapter 15. Luke 15, this is where, if you recall, what happened here. This is where the certain man had two sons, the prodigal sons in, uh, here in this and the younger one said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that follow to me, and he divided them and his living. 
And so what did he do? He went out there and he took all the substance that he had. It says he wasted his substance with riotous living, spent everything that he had. The mighty famine comes in the land. Now there's a time where there's want. He went and joined himself to a citizen of the country, sent him out in the fields to feed the swine. Would have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, but they wouldn't even give him that. No man would give him anything. So he comes to himself and he says, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And here I'm perishing with hunger. They won't even give me anything to eat. I'll arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Because of the fact that he turned away, he recognized I'm no more worthy to be called a son because of the fact that he'd gone out and sinned. That shows you the fact that sin takes you out of being worthy before the Lord. That's why we need to be sure we've confessed our sins and received forgiveness and cleansing from all unrighteousness. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Showed that he was willing to humble, be humbled and just be like a regular hired servant. He arose and came to his father, but when he was a great way off, his father saw him and compassion ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I've sinned against heaven in thy sight. And that wasn't just in his father's sight. He realized he sinned before God. You've got to realize when you commit sin, you're not just doing it before people, you're doing it before God. And he says, I am no more worthy to be called thy son. That shows you the fact that someone who, again, is walking in sin, He's not worthy to be called a son, but you know our Heavenly Father is faithful and just and full of mercy and full of grace, and He will forgive us of all of our sins. And we see this shown as the son said to the father, all this is what he told him, and then the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. The best actually means the first robe. Not best, it actually means first. First in time is the word protos. First robe, as Young's brings out. What's that? That's a thing he had on at one time. What have we had? We've had a robe of righteousness. We've been walking right with him. Bring this first robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive now. He's lost and he's found. They began to be merry. It shows you that God will forgive you of your sins. Be sure you confess your sins. You receive forgiveness, cleansing from all unrighteous and you come back to him and he will forgive you of your sins and he restored him back he says, but the elder son, of course, was in the field. Remember, he got mad about it. He came nigh and heard the music and the dancing. One of the servants asked what these things meant. He said, thy brothers, brothers come. The father's killed the fatted calf because he received him safe and sound. He was angry. wouldn't go in. His father came out and treated him. He said to his father, lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment, yet thou never gave me a kid, but I make merry with my friends. He's upset because he never got the same thing that his brother got. As soon as this thy son has come, which thou hast devoured thy living with the harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. He said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. The problem was he didn't know that everything that the father had was his, and he could have come and taken anything that he wanted any time from the father. You've got to know that all the promises of God belong to you. And if you're right with God, you can come and receive every promise that belongs to you at any time. Don't sit there and not take hold of what belongs to you in Christ. You need to take hold of your promises. And so, of course, he's the meat that we should make merry and be glad for this thy brother is dead is alive again and was lost and now is found. That shows the fact that we need to confess our sins. We need to be restored to fellowship with the Lord and we need to be sure that we are walking in his ways. And also, God wants you to take hold of the promises of God and see them come to pass in your life. We're going to be worthy if we deal with sin in our life. Over in Luke chapter 20, in verse 35, we see something further about being worthy. In Luke 20, 35, it says, They which shall be accounted worthy. That's not everybody, is it? They who which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. It's talking about the world to come. Because here Jesus was talking about the children of this world marrying or given in marriage. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain, or the word obtain means to attain to, or it actually means to hit the mark and be able to attain to something or obtain it. That shows you the fact that not everybody is going to obtain or attain to the world to come. Only those that are accounted worthy 
are maybe the ones that are going to. And who counts you worthy? The Lord is the one who accounts us worthy. We will be accounted worthy or deemed entirely deserving, worthy of obtaining the world to come if we have met the conditions. Over in Luke chapter 21, we see it in verse 34. He says this, Take heed to yourselves. You and I have to take heed to ourselves. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, drunkenness, cares of this life. Some people think, well, I'm not involved in surfeiting or drunkenness, but how about the cares of this life? That's worries, anxieties. It's the Greek word merimna. You're not to have any care, worry, or anxiety, concerns about anything. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare it shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. That's why as all these things are going to come down the road, don't let yourself have cares, worries, or anxieties. If you do, it'll keep you in bondage. It'll be a snare to you. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy. Now when we talk about this being accounted worthy here, it's a form of the word axio, kata axio. This particular word is in the subjunctive. The subjunctive means it's conditional. Watch ye therefore and pray always that you might be accounted worthy, would be the way you'd translate this. You might be accounted worthy. And notice it's passive voice, meaning who's the one who is going to determine whether you're worthy or not? Not you. God does. Somebody else is going to count you worthy. But at the same time, there's some things that you need to do. You need to be watching so you don't enter into temptation. Watch and pray. That you might be, may, might be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. The word escape doesn't mean you're going to fly away and be gone from here. It means to flee out of or get, seek safety and escape the evil that's coming on the earth. God will protect you and you are going to escape all these things that shall come to pass and you're going to be able to stand before the Son of Man victorious. But who's going to be accounted worthy to escape it? Only those who've met the conditions, which means you're going to have to watch and you're going to have to pray, which means you're going to have to get skilled in spiritual warfare. You're going to have to be spiritually attentive to what's going on in the realm of the Spirit so that you don't get deceived. Very important that you watch and pray. We also see the fact that those that are going to be counted worthy before God are those that are witnessing for Him. In Matthew, or Acts chapter 5, Acts chapter 5 down here in verse 41, here's the ones who were beaten, commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and they were finally let go. And they said, they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for His name. You're going to be accounted worthy if you suffer shame, if you've ever been persecuted for preaching the gospel. Don't ever back off preaching the gospel. If so, you will not be accounted worthy before the Lord. It is important that we do not ever shy away from doing something that would still bring persecution. He goes on and he says, daily in the temple and every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. doesn't matter what anybody says. You're going to teach and preach Jesus Christ, and you're going to continue to carry out the gospel. Otherwise, you will not be found worthy before the Lord. At the same time, you're going to have some sufferings that are going to come. Sufferings of persecution. In Romans chapter 8, verse 18, it tells us this. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with a glory which shall be revealed in us. What's going to happen? As you are doing the things that God wants, you're going to be found to be worthy before Him. And what's with the worthy to, with, to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed in us? You've got to understand that the glory of God is going to be coming into the church. That's talking about right here on earth. We're not talking about when you get to heaven. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to, with the glory revealed in us. It means all those who are found to be worthy because they've gone through the suffering, all those are going to be those that are going to see the glory manifested. Isn't the glory of God going to be poured out on the church mightily? Don't think for a moment that it's going to happen for you if, without having sufferings that will come because of the gospel. You are going to have suffering because of the gospel. It's important you realize that. In fact, the Bible says over in 2 Timothy chapter 3, over here in verse 12, 
Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You'll have persecution. You're going to have persecution for righteousness, persecution for preaching the gospel, persecution for do, doing the things that God says. But it shows you something. How godly are we living if we aren't getting much persecution? If we are getting persecution, that shows we are living godly. If we're not getting any, I wonder how godly we are living. Because you're going to get persecution when you stand up for what the truth is. We see another scripture over in Acts. Acts chapter 13. See, God wants us to walk worthy before Him. Acts 13, verse 46. Paul and Barnabas waxed bold, said it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, and seeing you put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. That means that people who do not receive the word of God to receive Jesus, God considers them unworthy to receive everlasting life. They'll be found to be unworthy before him, and they'll end up going to see the results of that, which will be punishment, of them, of course, going to hell. We see over in Acts chapter 15, down in verse 38. Here's where Paul thought not good to take him. It's talking about John, John Mark. See, Barnabas wanted to take John on this missionary journey with him all together. But Paul thought it was not good to take him. It's the word thought not good. Is this word axio. He said it wasn't worthy, essentially, or suitable or fit to take him with them. Why? Because John bailed out. He departed from them to Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. He quit. That shows the fact that because of the fact that he didn't continue in what God had told him to do and he backed out off, that showed the fact that God did not consider him worthy. Paul, responding to what the Holy Spirit was showing him, this guy was not worthy before God. What's that tell you? Your track record in your walk with the Lord reveals whether you're worthy before God or not. You don't start out with something and then turn around and turn away from it and think that you're going to be found to be worthy. Consistency and doing the things of God is important with Him. And you're going to be found worthy if your track record shows that you're following the way of the Lord. We see over next. You see, your deeds are important. Your deeds are going to show whether or not you're worthy or not. And we can see it just from scriptures. Here it talks about in Acts 23, 29, where he says to have laid nothing to the charge of them worthy of death or bonds. Why? Because he didn't do anything wrong. Otherwise, if you do things that cause you to be worthy of death, then you would just suffer death. But he didn't do anything. There was nothing laid to his charge that would cause him to be shown to be worthy of death. The point we're making in this is the fact that God is looking at all the things that you do to find out whether you're worthy before him or not. And your deeds, your works, are going to show that forth. Acts 25, 11, same, same thing. It says, whether I've committed anything worthy of death. He hadn't committed anything that was worthy of death whatsoever. But what would be something that would cause a person to be considered worthy of death from God's standpoint? Look what it says over here in Romans chapter 1, down here in verse 28 where it says those who were the homosexuals, remember the ones, we go back a ways, we see that these were ones who knew God, verse 21, did not glorify Him as God. They weren't thankful. They became vain in imaginations. Their foolish heart, heart was darkened. They said they were professing themselves to be wise, but they were fools instead. They changed the glory of the incorruptible God into image made like the corruptible man. So God gave them up the uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between them. And so they change the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature themselves more than the Creator. Well, what was the result of all that? God gave them up to their vile affections. They got involved in homosexuality with the women changing the natural use, the men doing the same thing. And so here we had homosexuals and lesbian uh, uh, operations going on in them. Even as they didn't like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them to a reprobate mind or a not approved mind to do those things that are not convenient. If you don't walk worthy before the Lord in obedience to Him, you'll have a reprobate mind and you'll end up just going and doing all these other things. And what happened to these guys? It said they're filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetous, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, 
backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, means they break covenants, they don't hold covenants, unmerciful, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Otherwise, people that walk in those ways, they're going to be worthy of death. They're going to be worthy of spiritual death. They're going to be separated from God for eternity. They not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. That's why, of course, what's that sound like? It sounds like the world today, doesn't it? All the list of those things. People are doing evil things. And they're going to be found to be worthy of death if they do not walk in the ways of the Lord. Now we see something else about who is shown to be worthy. And attitudes before God are showing the fact that we are worthy. Romans 16.1, I commend you to Phoebe, our sister, who was a servant of the church, which is at Centria, that you receive her, accept her, in the Lord as becometh saints. The word becometh is axios, which means as worthy saints, literally as becomes a worthy saints. Otherwise, if you're a worthy saint, you're going to receive people who come to minister to you. Don't reject the ministry that God brings to you. If so, you're not going to be found to be worthy before the Lord. In this case, they were to receive her as worthy saints, showing themselves to be worthy before the Lord. We see something else in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, in verse 2. He says this, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? We're going to be judging the world. If the world shall be judged by you, are you un unworthy to judge the smallest matters? When he talks about unworthy here, it means unfit. Are you unfit to be able to judge the smallest matters? You see, if we can't be found worthy before God because we understand the word and can judge small matters in our life now or things that we're dealing with, you think you're going to be in a position to judge in the world to come? No. Otherwise, we should not be found worthy. We need to know the Word. We need to know the Word of what's right and what's wrong, what is in line with God's Word and what's not. You're going to be found worthy in the measure that you know the Word of God. You don't know too much of the Word? Why? Well, you won't be able to judge things. You're going to have to know the Word of God, and that is so important. Also, let's say you've had a lot of, you've done a lot of evil in the past. Well, God will forgive you of all your sins if you will confess and turn away from them. 1 Corinthians 15, 9, Paul says, I'm the least of the apostles, and I'm not meet or worthy to be called an apostle, as Young brings out. That's what the word means. He wasn't worthy to be called an apostle. Why? Because he persecuted the church of God. But he says, by the grace of God, I am what I am. Why? Because God forgave him. See, if you will be forgiven of your sins, then you can be restored to being considered worthy before the Lord. And that's exactly what happened in his case. In fact, you also got to realize that the reason was because he did all these things ignorantly. 1 Timothy 1.12, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who enabled me, for he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Otherwise, he had to show he was faithful. People that are faithful are going to be accounted worthy. Before, he was a blasphemer, persecutor, injurious. I obtained mercy, though, because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. That's why if we do things ignorantly in unbelief, we, of course, will be found to not be, uh, we won't be counted against us. We can be restored to the Lord and be shown to be worthy before him. In Philippians chapter 1 and verse 27, it says this, Only let your conversation, which means your conduct, is what it's talking about, be as it becometh, or suitable, or again, worthy of the gospel of Christ. Your conduct should always be showing forth the gospel of Jesus Christ. You should be showing forth everything that the Word shows. If you're going to be found worthy before God, how does He know you? By your fruits. You should be showing the fruit. We should be walking in the ways of the Lord. And uh, what's this going to be? Whether I come and see or else be absent, I hear of your affairs, that you stand fast in one spirit, one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. In other words, if your conduct is going to be shown to be worthy of the gospel, this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to stand fast in one spirit. You're going to be with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. You're not going to be backing off of anything whatsoever. There's another scripture over in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 
and it says this in verse 11. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father doth his children, that you would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Now there's a mistake here in the way they've translated this. Hath called would be past tense. It makes you think he's already called you, so, you know, everything's going to be fine. But no, this is talking about God's work of calling you, which is a present. See, you have a call legally in Christ, but then you have an, a call continually at work in you as you are walking it out, because it's in the present tense. This is why Young's translates it is calling. What this means is the fact that that you would walk worthy of God who is calling you into his kingdom and glory. See, a lot of people think he's called you into it. That means you're automatically going to be there. No, it's not automatic. Who is calling you into his kingdom and glory? Is everybody going to enter into the kingdom and see the glory of God? No. Only ones that respond. So he's talking to them about exhorting them, comforting, charging them that they would walk worthy of God. Your walk is important to God. It's going to determine whether you're considered worthy before him or not. Who is calling you into his kingdom and his glory. See, it's not an automatic thing. And of course, he said, for this cause, we thank God without ceasing, because when we received the word of God, which you heard of us, we received it not as the word of men, but as in truth the word of God, which works effectually also in you that believe. How are you going to be shown to be worthy before God? Because of the word that's in you. Because of the word that's working in you and what you hear and do. It's going to be shown forth as you enter into the rule and the reign of God and see the glory of God manifested through the Word working in your life. We see something else over in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. We're bound to thank God always for your brethren as it is meet or as it is worthy because that your faith groweth exceeding, exceedingly and charity of every one of you all towards each other aboundeth. Otherwise... The fact is that he's given thanks to him as, it's, as is worthy before God that your faith is growing and that your love's abounding. What does that mean? As your faith is growing, your love's abounding, that means you're being found worthy before God. That's why he was given thanks for them. You need to be growing in faith. You need to be growing in love. You need to be showing forth the fruit of God if you're going to be found worthy before the Lord. Verse 5, or verse 4, he says, we ourselves glory in you, the churches of God, for your patience, faith, and all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom for which also you suffer. Otherwise, it's not automatic that you're going to be counted worthy. Who's counted worthy? The one who is patient in and, and showing, continuing in faith in the midst of all the persecutions or pressures, tribulations, pressures, that you endure. Whatever comes against you, God wants you to be patient, steadfast in the midst of the word, doing what it says, not drawing back, and you're going to be counted worthy of the kingdom for which you suffer. We also see something else in 2 Thessalonians 1, down in verse 11. He prayed for them, and he says, Wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness, and the work of faith with power that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. What does that tell you? God will count you worthy of the calling if these things are shown in you. You fulfill the good pleasure of his goodness. You accomplish the work of faith with power. The name of the Lord Jesus is glorified in you. Why? Because you are doing the things that he says. In other words, as you are seeing all this, we see the fact that those who are going to be shown to be worthy is not an automatic thing whatsoever. First Timothy is going to see how important it is in just a few minutes. And some very strong scriptures. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. Which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Now this is one who's becoming women professing this. Showing forth that they are worthy. This is a word which refers to being fit or becoming someone who is fit to be showing the fact that they are professing godliness by your good works. In other words, in the measure that you have good works will be to show the fact that you are godly, that you are revealing the fact that you are fit or you are worthy before God, showing the fact that you are a godly person. How do we know someone's godly? 
because of the fact of the things that they do. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. He says this, Refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. That's what we're supposed to exercise ourselves to. Bodily exercise profits little. Don't make that a major thing in your life. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation, otherwise worthy to be received and accepted. Showing the fact that when you do the things that God says that are worthy, you're going to be found worthy. And what is that? The fact that godliness is profitable to all things. You need to exercise yourself in hearing and doing the word and being godly in everything that you do because it has promised not only of the life to come, but also of that which is now, but also of that which is to come at the same time. We see another scripture of being shown to be worthy. Not every pastor out there is going to be shown to be worthy worthy before God. 1 Timothy 5.12 says, Let the elders, or this would be someone who's a presbyterist, an elder would be like a, a pastor over a church, that rule well, be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word, this is really the word means speech, and doctrine, which would be in the teaching. That means someone who is really laboring well in the word and in doctrine, doing what they're supposed to do, they're going to be counted worthy of double honor by the Lord. Those are the ones that rule well. And by the way, when we talk about someone who is ruling, this literally means, it's the word pro estimi. It comes from two words. Pro, which means before. Estemi, which means stand. And it means those who stand before you. And what do the people do who stand before you? Teaching the word of God. That's what I've got to do. I'm responsible to be sure that I am laboring in word and doctrine and bringing forth the full counsel of God and teaching everything so that I can be counted worthy of double honor. I'm not going to be counted worthy of double honor if I don't bring forth the truth. That means a whole lot of pastors out there, they're not going to be found worthy before God if they're not bringing forth the true word of God and the true doctrine of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the laborer is worthy of his reward and also what ha that means that people, God will cause people then to give into that ministry, as it's talking about. You don't muzzle out the ox that treads the corn, but the laborer is worthy of his reward, which will come forth from the Lord through the people who are ministering back to meet the needs of that particular uh, church or that particular uh, pastor. We see in 1 Timothy chapter 6, and verse 1, let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor. Worthy of all honor. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Now this is interesting. If you're under a yoke or under some kind of bondage or burden, you're still to count your own masters worthy of all honor. You say, well, why would I count them worthy of honor if they got me under bondage? Because you do everything unto the Lord, not unto men. If you do it unto men then you're going to have an attitude against them. But if you do everything unto the Lord, you're going to always have a good attitude, regardless of what the situation is. See, we've got to do everything to the Lord. When you do it unto the Lord, He's going to then find you to be worthy, and you're going to be rewarded by the Lord. That's the same thing when we says we bless those that curse us. Do we repay evil to the guy who curses us? No, we bless them. We do good to those that have used us. We love our enemies. That's what you do in the New Testament. You do everything that God says you, in order to be a blessing, to love, to do good, to pray for those that persecute you and use you. And same thing here. You count even some, a master who has you in bondage or doing evil things. You still count them worthy of all honor because you're doing it unto the Lord. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. We see something else to be shown worthy. See, we've got to do things God's ways, not our own. 2 Timothy 2, verse 2, he says this, The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others. Now these ones who are able, this is the word, sufficient or fit or being worthy, to be able to teach others. What's that tell you? God wants you to be faithful, to take hold of the things that are being taught, and to be able to have it such in you that you can go and teach it to others. That's going to be shown. See, the word's coming to you, and you're supposed to take hold of it and be able to teach it to others. 
to minister, and you're going to be found worthy if you do that. God wants us to realize that we have a responsibility to teach the Word of God to others. We see over in Hebrews, in chapter 11, who was found to be the ones that were worthy were the ones that obeyed God. Look what it says, though, happened to them. And you're going to see that down the road, it may not happen in our lifetime, but down the road, there's going to be a lot of evil things happen to the Christians. There's going to be a lot of martyrs. You've got to realize that. Talking about these ones and heroes of faith in Hebrews 11. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. They were tempted. They were slain with a sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They weren't worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains and dens and caves of the earth. These all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, which is what? Eternal life and what we are going to get in the life to come, that they without us should not be made perfect. What's that tell you? Those without us should not be made perfect or complete. Who are the ones that are going to be perfect and complete? The ones that are going to be with the Lord. That means all the rest of them are going to be rejected. All the people that do evil things, they're not going to be with God. It's only those that are going to be made perfect, going on and complete, finishing the work of God in their life, that are going to be with the Lord. Very important. Now we bring a lot of principles that we see of our works and our actions. Now the next scriptures that you're going to see are pretty strong scriptures, but they also tie in with us being worthy. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, Unto the angel of the church in Sardis write these things. He says I, about, I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and are dead. This is a guy who, he's Christian in name only, and he's not doing what God wants him to do. He just had living it in a name, but he's dead because his works. Your works are very important. They're going to show whether or not you are worthy before God or not. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Now, this is a mistake in the King James again. The word perfect is the, instead is a word which means to be fulfilled or to be filled up. In other words, the works were not fulfilled that they were supposed to carry out. Notice below, it's the word plero, to make fill, full or to fill up why they translate it. Young's literal corrects it. That's why Young's is so good. This guy's going to get rewarded for sure. Young's will, because he was worthy to translate things correctly. All these other guys, they're in trouble because they've changed the Word of God. They're not going to get a good report, I guarantee you. It says, Be watchful, strengthen the things that remain, are ready to die, for I have not found thy works fulfilled or filled up before God. What does that tell you? God expects us to have our works be carried out and fulfilled before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If, therefore, thou shalt not watch, I'll come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I come unto thee. Thou hast a few names in Sardis which have not defiled their garments. They walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Who's worthy before God? The one who walks with him in white. What is white? White is talking about those that are going to walk with him in righteousness, in holiness. They've dealt with sin in their life. They've not defiled their garments. How are our garments defiled? By sin. This is why it is imperative that you deal with all sin in your life. He says there's not, there's a few that haven't defiled their garments. They walk with me in white. They are worthy. People that have defiled garments will not be worthy before God. He that overcometh, and this means to conquer and carry off the victory, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, which is righteousness, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. That tells you something. A person's name could be blotted out of the book of life, or he would never say, I will not blot it out of the book of life. Would he? That shows you the fact that a person's name is not ever set in the book of life unless he's found worthy before God because he walks in white, clothed in white raiment. But I'll confess his name before my father and before his angels. What that tells us is the fact that we've got to deal with sin. We can't have defiled garments. We need to walk in white and righteousness. We need to do the works of God. We need to be watchful. We need to strengthen all these areas. We need to be the fact that we're 
choose the fact, be sure that we're walking in His ways and be showing forth fruit, and we're walking worthy before the Lord without defiled garments. Look over at Hebrews chapter 10. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says this in verse 26. If we sin willfully, willfully after we've received the knowledge of the truth, now that means we're defiling ourselves, doesn't it? There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. That means judgment is going to come on people that are knowingly walking in sin. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. That's pretty heavy. That's what happened in the Old Testament. Of how much sore punishment be suppose you shall ye, he be thought worthy or judged worthy or fit or determined by God who has trodden underfoot the Son of God. How did I trod underfoot the Son of God? When I did not do his word and I sinned knowingly. And has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an holy thing. How did I count the blood as an unholy thing? Because I didn't walk in the light as he is in the light. Now the blood has not cleansed me. Now I've been polluted. I've been stained. And hath done despite. The word despite means to insult the spirit of grace. What does that tell you? When we sin willfully, and this is a strong scripture, when you sin willfully against God's word, you are essentially trotting underfoot the Son of God. You are counting the blood of the covenant as an unholy thing, and you're doing insult to the Spirit of grace who brings grace to you through the word of God when you hear and do it. That's strong stuff. God wants us to be sure that we are not walking in sin. You and I are to be found worthy before God so he can bring forth his blessings. And he will if we do what he says. Look at Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, we pick up here in verse 8. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden, that were called, were not worthy. See, everybody that's called isn't necessarily worthy. Only those that meet the conditions of all the things we've seen are the ones that are going to be found worthy before the Lord. Well, you come here in verse 11. The king came in and saw the guests. He saw there was a man, because they went out and found some people out in the highways and byways, brought them in. He saw a man that had not on a wedding garment. This guy didn't have it on. He was supposed to. In fact, back here when it talks about this guy having on this, when it says had not on, you kind of lose something here. Because the word had on is a word and duo. Look below. And what's in duo? This is the word which means to sink into clothing, translated put on, same word translated about put on the armor of God or put on the new man. And it means literally to clothe yourself. He had not, the reason why you know it's clothe yourself is because it's a middle voice. This is why we got to look up the, the tense voice and mood. The middle voice means that the subject is doing the action for his own benefit. Now, this is not talking about a person just being born again. You say, well, he's born again. He's got, a, he's got a spirit that's right. Because do you put the spirit on yourself? No, God does when you receive Jesus. This is talking about the guy doing something for himself. He saw a man which had not on or had not put on or had not clothed himself with a wedding garment. What kind of a garment is a wedding garment? It's white. It's clean. It's pure. It's holy, isn't it? That meant the fact it's not defiled. When he said, friend, how came us then not having a wedding garment? He was speechless. What'd they do to this guy? This king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. He wasn't worthy, was he? Because of the fact that he didn't have a wedding garment on. Because he didn't have a wedding garment on, he's going to be cast into the outer darkness. The next verse says, many are called but few are chosen. Referring to the fact that who's chosen? The ones that have the wedding garment on. The ones that are walking white in white with the Lord. The ones that are shown to be worthy because they're walking uprightly before the Lord. They clothe themselves with white. And whose responsibility is to do that? You're and mine. 
Remember what it says in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 7, where it speaks about, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. Praise God. What does it say next? And his wife, of the one who is betrothed to him, which is the, the bride, which is the church, shouldn't have been wife. There's only, by the way, it wouldn't be wife if the marriage hadn't already been accomplished. It says the marriage has come, but it hasn't happened yet and the wife made herself ready. It should have been translated woman because the same word gune is translated woman or wife. And it's really talking about a betrothed woman, which is really what they bring out down here, and which is good, a betrothed woman who is engaged woman, essentially. Hath made herself ready. She made herself ready and prepared. What did she do? To her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. How did she make herself ready? because she was righteous. How was she righteous? Because she was doing righteous. She was clean. That meant she cleaned herself up, purified herself, got rid of all the filthiness of the flesh and spirit, and also was white. And we know the fact that white refers to the white linen, the white linen of righteousness of the saints, the fine linen. So here we see the fact that those people that are not walking righteous, that have spot and wrinkle, they're not found worthy. What kind of a church is Jesus coming back for? A church without spot, without wrinkle, blameless, unrebukable, unreprovable, one that's not spotted at all, whatsoever. Now this next scripture is going to be strong, but you need to see it, because it's something that's the we're going to see happen for people. In Luke chapter 12, we'll go back for a moment, and here if you remember this, we've talked about it before about the servant who came, and the servant was faithful and a wise steward, we saw this when we talked about faithfulness, whom the Lord shall make ruler over his household to give him their portion of meat in due season. That's the guy that's been doing what God says, who's the faithful one. Remember, who comes back with Jesus? The called, the chosen, and the faithful. We saw that in Revelation 17, verse 14. So this guy's faithful. He's doing what God says. He's going to be found worthy before the Lord. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find him doing. He's doing all the things that God told him to do. But, and if that servant, this is talking about someone who's born again, remember. If the servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens, and eat and drink, and to be drunken, otherwise this guy starts doing evil things. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looked not for him, and an hour when he's not aware, and shall cut him asunder. That means he's cut off. And will appoint him his portion, whatever his part is, whatever his, he's worthy of getting, with who? With the unbelievers. Well, what, what, what are the unbelievers getting? They're going to hell. What's going to happen to this guy that's cut off? He's going to be with the unbelievers. One saved, always saved, goes right out the window. Because it's a lie in teaching. See? You've got to understand. You've got to be found worthy before God. Now let's read on. It's going to even be pretty strong. And that servant which knew his Lord's will. And that's a born-again person who knew his Lord's will. I mean, he had some knowledge. And prepared not himself. He had knowledge, but he wasn't doing it. Remember what happens to the guy that doesn't do the word? He has a great fall, doesn't he? He's the one that's going to hear, depart from me in Matthew chapter 7. Only the ones who do the will of the Father are going to hear, you know, well done. Neither did according to his will. Now this is a guy, though, that didn't deny the Lord. He didn't turn away from the Lord, apparently. But he knew his Lord's will, prepared not himself, neither did according to his will. He wasn't a doer of the things that he should have been doing. Shall be beaten with many stripes. That's quite a statement. And then it says, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes, the guy who didn't know the will, he should have known, but he didn't, he did commit things worthy of stripes, which is sin, right? He's going to get punished. He shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of whom shall much be required. In other words, as God is giving you the things of the word of God, you're required to carry it out and do it. Now, 
Should that make you think, well, maybe I don't want to hear anything, so I won't have all this I'm required to do? Well, you'll be in trouble, because you don't walk in the ways of the Lord, you won't be found worthy before Him. At the same time, what are you going to be rewarded for? All your works. Well, how, what kind of works are we going to do? All the things that we learn and we act upon in the Word. And you want to be getting all these works and see all these blessings and rewards coming forth. But at the same time, Remember how we keep driving home to you the point that we must be doers of the word, not hearers only. Because what happens if you don't do the words you hear? This guy, even if he didn't know it, he should have known it, he's still going to be beaten with few stripes. Few stripes. If under much is given of him shall much be required. What's that tell you? The fact that if we don't do the things at all, and we go out and do evil, we'll end up in hell with the unbelievers. If we don't do it and we knew it, then we didn't go out and do evil things, but we just didn't do the will of the Father. We're going to be beaten with many stripes. If you don't do it and you didn't know it, you're going to be beaten with few stripes, and you're going to be losing all your reward for sure because you didn't do the things that He wanted you to do. Well, what are we rewarded for? For our works. And what are we should be doing? What's gonna, what shows the fact that you're worthy? Your works, your fruit, all the things you do. Whether you're not you're walking in His ways, walking worthy before the Lord, whether you're being fruitful in every good work, whether you're being empowered with the power of God, whether you're walking with long-suffering and being steadfast with joyfulness, all the things we've seen, as we've seen Scripture after Scripture pointing out all these things. What you hear and what you do is very important in your life. Not only for now, but in the life to come. Because you and I are going to be found worthy in the measure that we have heard and done the Word and done the works of God and brought forth fruit and carried out the will of God, fulfilled the works of God as we saw, done all the things that He tells us to do, and walked in the light of the Word of God. And that is so important. We want to be sure that we are found worthy before the Lord. If we're found worthy before the Lord, then we're going to see the blessings of God come forth in the life to come. So we've seen the fact that fruitfulness shows the fact that you're worthy. True repentance by the fruitfulness shows that you're going to be worthy. Walking in His ways according to the knowledge of God, spiritual understanding and wisdom, you're going to show Him to be worthy. Strengthened with all power, steadfast, doing all, filled with knowledge, cre increasing in knowledge, it said, and showing forth fruitfulness in every good work, that shows the fact that we're going to be worthy. Being a workman for God and a laborer, that's someone that's going to be considered worthy. If we don't love the Lord first place and we don't let anybody else get in the way of doing the Word of God, we're going to be found worthy. If we let a son, mother, father, daughter, anybody get in the way, you will not be found worthy of Jesus. If we don't crucify our flesh and follow Jesus, you won't be found worthy. You've got to crucify your flesh to be found worthy. Because you walk in the flesh, what do you do? You walk in sin. Will we be found worthy before God? No. We've got to deal with sin in order to be worthy. We've got to be those who are going to watch and pray so we'll be counted worthy to escape all these things. Who's going to be the ones that are going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air? Only the ones are without spot, without wrinkle, that are holy, without blemish before Him. That is the ones. You want to be one who also is shown to be worthy to attain and reach the life to come. That is quite a statement and we saw in Luke chapter 20, verse 35. Take heed to yourselves, so you'll be accounted worthy to escape everything that is going to come down the line. You've got to receive the Word of God and do the things that God wants us to do. We saw the fact that time after time, if you hold fast to the Word, even in the face of circumstances, of negatives, persecution, suffering, whatever it is, that is going to be important. Because remember, those that have come through and held fast to the Word in the midst of the sufferings, they're going to have the glory of God poured upon them. The revelation is this. Who's going to get the glory of God in the end? The people that have held fast in the midst of the persecution. Because persecution is coming. You can see what's getting set up little by little in the world today. How close we are at the end, who knows. But one thing's for sure, we certainly are going down that way. You just look at what's going on with all the things that are happening in the world. 
and what's happening in this government, and what's happening in all the things that are happening. You're aware of what's going on. It's not a good, good situation whatsoever. The devil is definitely at work. That's why the body of Christ has got to get strong, do the works of God, walk in His ways, be obedient. We're going to be getting stronger and stronger, lighter and lighter. The glory of God's going to be poured out on the church mightily, and you're going to be working for God. You're going to be doing the mighty works of the Lord. And you're not going to be walking in sin or the ways of this world or any of these kind of things. You're going to be shown forth through your works, through godliness, through laboring, all these different things that we've seen, showing the fact that you are worthy. Also, the fact that you don't have a defiled garment. We've got to get rid of all the defilement in our life. Get rid of all the fleshly things. Get rid of all the sin areas in your life. You need to strive against that sin. Cast out all those devils. Get free of all those bondages. And we're not about to sin willfully and trod underfoot the, the Son of God and count the blood of Jesus Christ as just un unholy. Nothing. No big deal. No, that's applied to everybody as you walk in the light. Remember, as you walk in the light, as He is in the light, then the blood cleanses you of all sin. If not, it can't work for you. And also, we would do despite or insult to the Spirit of grace. We've got to be one of those who is going to cleanse ourselves of all of the filthiness. And we must be one of those that is going to walk in the ways of the Lord. Those that are counted worthy because they do what God says is the bottom line. They're going to be said to be faithful. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in to the joy of the Lord. Otherwise, they they're going to be in trouble. We don't want to be beaten with stripes. Instead, we want to be hear the good words because we're going to walk the walk. Because we're going to walk worthy before the Lord. Say this to me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your word that shows the fact that I am to walk worthy of the Lord, of the calling that's upon my life. <clears throat> and I'm going to walk worthy <clears throat> as I do what your word says. And I thank you that as I am obedient in hearing and doing your word, in being a worker for God, a laborer for you, true repentance, bringing forth fruit, doing the will of God, carrying out the works of God, fulfilling the call of God on my life, walking according to the knowledge of God, I am going to be found worthy and I'm going to cleanse myself from all sin. And I'm going to be counted worthy to escape all the things that are going to be coming on the earth. In fact, I'm going to be accounted worthy in the life to come to be able to judge the angels and to judge this world because I'll be found worthy because I'm walking in line with the Word. I'm going to be found worthy because I'm fulfilling all the good pleasure of your goodness and the work of faith with power and the name of the Lord being glorified in me. I am going to be found worthy because I'm going to do everything that you say. Thank you, Lord, that I'll have no defilement because I'm not about to get my name blotted out of the book of life. I will have no defiled garments. I will walk worthy because I will walk in white as righteous and holy before you. Even in the midst of suffering, I will keep my eyes on you and keep doing your word and keep preaching the gospel and I will be found worthy before you. I thank you, Lord, that I'm going to hear at the end of my days well done, thou good and faithful servant. You walked worthy before the Lord. Enter into the joy of the Lord and be rewarded with the rulership and all the blessings that will come in the life to come. Thank you, Lord. I'm making my decision. I'm walking worthy before the Lord all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen.